another week, another week of Champions League football as well. We are back here today for this new episode of Predicting the Last 16. Part 2 this time, unlike Part 1. Obviously, Part 1, we had the other four games. Part 2 will feature the next four games of the UEFA Champions League. The first leg of the Champions League Last 16 ties. And, well, who will win? Who will go through to the quarterfinals? Who I think will win the game as a whole? Let's find out entirely through this video as just like that then let's get underway and let's talk about the first game of part two of the UEFA Champions League round of 16 fixtures. Well, the first stadium and the first place we will be heading off to is Milan and we will be talking about the game between Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid first leg at the San Siro in Milan and while Atletico Madrid will not have happy memories of this ground I am certain I mean they did beat Athlet uh, they did beat AC Milan 2-1 last time out they did play in the stadium which was on the 28th of September 2021 but they will still remember the 2016 incident when Real Madrid beat uh, after the de Madrid in the UEFA Champions League final to guarantee uh, Real Madrid la uno decima or, as they like to call it, La Decima, the 10th Champions League here at the Giuseppe Miazza. But, yeah, let me say this now. For Inter Milan, they've pretty much won the league. And I'll say that now. They have pretty much won the Scudetto already. They are 11 points... Or, they are 9... They are 9 points ahead of second place Juventus with a game in hand. So, if that's the case, they'll go up to 12 points. And I think that might be too much to catch the Nerezzurri in all seriousness. If you want to win the Scudetto, you have to, well, start strong. And, well, Juve and AC Milan, they've done all right, but they've started dipping recently. Juve, they haven't won the last four. Obviously, they did lose to Inter Milan 1-0 uh, on the 4th of February. So, that isn't a good sign. AC Milan, again, they were going to do well. However, they did lose to Monza in the week, which will put them in a difficult position. So, yeah, if it's anything, it's a, it's into Milan's title to lose. And when you have someone like Lautaro Martinez scoring 20 goals already this season, and we are well halfway there, that's a deadly striker. Very deadly, deadly player. So, I do think... Inter Milan will well have the advantage on that. However, Atletico de Madrid this season, they are they were weird Atletico Madrid. They aren't the Atletico Madrid you think they are. They're a team that, well, has done very well. I mean, the two best players of Antoine Griezmann and Ibarra Barata have found a way to score. Antoine Griezmann specifically. Obviously, he went to Atletico there. He was a Barcelona player. He decided to join Atletico and then... He's done well. He has done... He's finding his form like he was in the 2018-2019 version of Antoine Griezmann, where he was he's scoring goals for fun. He's been part of the team. And I know his last assist was on the 31st of January against Rayo Bayagano, but still, you can you can still play well. And they actually benched Griezmann for the last game against Las Palmas to try and get him fit for this game against Inter Milan. Albano Barata and all... He is a player, well, that hasn't played recently. I think he could be injured, which will be a bit of a shame, obviously, if he is. But he has been an influential part of a good Champions League success this season. But, well, what we do know there with Atleti is they are they're, they're quite a scoring team this year. I mean, Angel Carrilla, Marcus Llorente, they're obviously a spy into their attack. Pablo Barrios, he's also been a good part there for Atletico. Scoring, assisting, all that not. So I do think this game will be a very tough game to call here. And I know people will obviously say it is and it's not and all that. But I think it will be. And I think it will be a tense game. Obviously, the Nerezzurri have a very, very strong defence. We do know that in the Champions League. And, well, even if, well, you did concede three goals at Benfica, you have conceded goals in the Champions League. I do think the Nerezzurri for this tie will be fine. They have conceded five goals in the competition. Atletico de Madrid, on the other hand, have also conceded have also conceded six goals. So it is pretty much 50-50 to what to say. However, I do think... I, I think this game could potentially end up as our first draw. And I can see this game being a draw. And I, I think for this game, I am going to call 
Inter Milan 1, Atletico de Madrid 1. I think this will be a very tight game. Part of me thinks the Zuri will win 2-1. But I'm going for my gut here. And I think for my gut, as seriousness, Atletico de Madrid and Inter Milan will cancel each other out. But then, I think when one person scores, another person will. I think it will be a very defensive game. However, I do guarantee both teams will score on this game. So my prediction for this game here will be Atletico de Madrid 1, Inter Milan Internazionale. Uno. So now off to the Netherlands and off to the Philips Stadion in Eindhoven for the next game between PSV Eindhoven and Borussia Dortmund. And well, yeah, this is again similar. However, these are a lot more attacking than rather defensive. PSV Eindhoven, wow. Wow, wow, as simple as that. They've got 70 goals in the league in the Eredivisie. Only 10 goals conceded, which, well... Is impressive if I you out of 22 games only conceding 10 goals. It's good going. It is very good going there for Peter Bosch's men. And well, Peter Bosch has made the team better in the hands. I mean, we obviously knew what he did for Ajax. He obviously won the Eredivisie for Ajax, obviously, before Eric Tanar came and well, did all the, did well, based his Ajax team off young, and youngsters and so on, like Peter Bosch did, obviously, before in 2016, 2017, and all that. But he is, he's developed a team now, Peter Bosch, who can win. He has developed a winning team. And, well, since, obviously, that loss against Arsenal, the 4 loss, they have kept winning. They have only lost once, once well, competitively against Feyenoord. But Feyenoord are another one that, well, they're in it. They are in the mix there for the title race. So, it's hard to call. PSV are, well, 10 points clear. But you also know Feyenoord are a team that, well, will never give up. PSV are also the team, I think they're only the second team, bound from Bayer Leverkusen in the top five leagues, or top six leagues, that are undefeated. They are an undefeated team. They have won, they have won 20, drawn two, lost zero. So they are on track to potentially do an invincible season, what we all know Arsenal previously did in 2005 in the Premier League. So we did, uh, we do know that. But yeah, for PSV, they obviously have, well... Luke de Jong, 33-year-old Luke de Jong, who, well, we knew he was a good player anyway when he spent his time at Sevilla, then at Barcelona. He came up clutch. He, he was a bit like Maron Fellaini there for Barcelona, how he came up clutch. He weren't particularly great, but he was there scoring the clutch goals. But, well, this season, he's scoring for fun, isn't he? He's scoring for fun. 19 goals he has scored in the Eredivisie, plus an extra two in the Champions League. So that's 21 goals he scored there, obviously, in the Champions League. And in uh, the Eredivisie, which, well, is pretty impressive. And, well, you do have good players there for PSV. I mean, you've got Harivin Lozano, who we did sign there of Napoli. He has worked like a gem, Harivin Lozano. And, well, you would think he is. I mean, Chucky Lozano, he did score a hat-trick against Ajax. I believe that ultimately, I think, might have sacked the Ajax coach. Yeah, they did uh, sack that coach then when they did lose 5-2. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, he has been scoring for fun, really. He has only scored, uh, he has only scored six goals since he has obviously came to uh, to PSV there from Napoli, which will be a bit of a shame. But still, they still have that. Plus, you do have the defensive backups there of the Genio Desk, Amal Bella Kotchup, uh, Patrick Van Arnholt, who well are doing the keys there for Eindhoven. And Patrick Van Arnholt, we do know he's a player that we haven't seen in a while, but he's still doing the stuff. He's still coming up clutch doing what he has to do in that PSV shirt. So, ultimately, things are going well there for PSV. Things are going well there for PSV. However, they have, they have obviously played Arsenal, Lons and Sevilla, but will Borussia Dortmund be a different task? I think they will. I think they will. And, well, Dortmund, they're actually going a bit under the radar this year, which they might actually like, because, well, last year, they were heavily favourites. They were favourites for the title race at wrong time between Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. At the end of the day, Dortmund did his Spurs and bottled it. And, uh, yeah, apologise, Dortmund fans. But, uh, yeah, this Dortmund team, you obviously know they're a team that want to do well. And they they have done well. They're fourth in the league at the minute, which is a shame. So, in the Bundesliga, they might, do, they, might, they, might, they might not be doing so great. But in the Champions League, you know what they're going to do. You know what we're going to do uh, in the Champions League. We finish first in the Champions League in the group of death with PSG, AC Milan and Newcastle United. So they are certainly a team not to say, right, we're going to beat them easily. Because Dortmund become a clutch in this tournament. This is what they are. However, 
Dortmund have a terrible last 16. Uh, they have a terrible last 16 record. They can never get up to the quarterfinals. Ever since they did get Champions League final in 2012-13 season when they did play against uh, Bayern Munich, they haven't been the same Borussia Dortmund team. They have failed to get to that stage a long time. And that is a factor. That is a factor there for Borussia Dortmund uh, fans and players. What we need to have in the head that even though we might not be so great, oh no, they did last get to the quarterfinals when they did lose to AS Monaco that time. But I still think they're with Borussia Dortmund. They're a team that can believe. They they will believe. Obviously, it's the Lieber, uh, or one love, one true love is Borussia Dortmund. But yeah, I think losing to Chelsea last season there for Dortmund was a, was a biggie. Was a biggie. However, I think at the Philips Stadion, it will be tough. And I do think it will be tough because I'm actually going to say PSV will beat Borussia Dortmund. And yeah, I know I know people are going to hate that, but I think PSV will beat them. I'm going to say 2-1 there, 2 PSV. So I'm going there for a 2-1 win to PSV. I just think at home, they're a formidable team. They haven't lost at home this season. I just think that will be a factor to take in. They haven't lost a single game at home at the Philips Stadion. This ground is a fortress for them. So I do think because of that, Dortmund will try and make it obviously competitive with the yellow wall. But I'm going to say PSV are in two. Richard Dortmund one. Luke Dion will get a goal. Chucky Lozano I think will get back on with the score sheet. And then for Borussia Dortmund, I'm going to say Marco Reus will get a goal to equal it out a bit. Make it into 2-1 lead there for PSV. Going up to the C9 Duna Park. That will be tough. But yeah, 2-1 there to PSV. That's all I'm saying. Next day, and we're off to Portugal at the Estado do Dragao in Porto for today's game between FC Porto and Arsenal. And, well, it does seem ages that I've mentioned Arsenal in the Champions League last 16, does it? It seems absolutely ages. But, well, Arsenal, you've deserved your place here, my friend, so congratulations. And, well, I will talk about them secondly. First of all, let me talk about the host of FC Porto. And, well, they did finish second in this year's Champions League. They did finish behind Barcelona. However, it was tight. It was tight. Because they could have easily gone above Barcelona and potentially not ha even had this time in the first place. But, in the Champions League, they did, well, struggle-ish. They did lose to uh they did lose to Barcelona twice, which was a big factor there for this game because we do know if Porto would have won, that would have meant, well, Porto would have gone into first place, Barcelona would have jumped into second. Potentially even, Barcelona might have even not made it because of Shakhtar Dzenetsk, who, well, fair play to them. They did very well. Fair play to them. They have done quite well as well. No one thought they would be... No, yeah, nobody thought they would beat Barcelona at Hamburg like they did, but they did. They did beat Shak they did beat Barcelona, Shakhtar and yet, so well done to them. But this isn't about Shakhtar, this is about Porto. And well, yeah, with FC Porto, they've been a good team. They have been a good team, however, they haven't been the Porto team we now expect. We obviously do know that you you do have a forty year old Pepe who is playing there for the team. His birthday is in a couple of days, so he will turn forty one by the second leg at uh, the Emirates Stadium. So well that is him, obviously, doing his best. Goals-wise, for the Champions League, we do have Winners and Galano and Avalnison, who both have scored four goals in the league. Avalnison has been the top player there for Porto. However, it has been mixed between, well, Vendal, Galano, Conchiao, Teremi, and all, all that sort of things. But, yeah, with FC Porto, we do know that they've been doing all right in this season. They have scored 37 goals, 16 have been conceded. But regarding the league and so on, they probably might not win the league because, well, Benfica and Sporting Lisbon are the two that were fighting through this year. Benfica have got 55 points. Sporting do have 52, but they have two games in hand, which will be a massive, massive bonus there if they want to win the Liga Portugal for the first time, I believe, in about 20 years. I'm not too particularly sure, however, there for Porto. And another team that, well, wants to win the league Arsenal. Arsenal are another team that do want to win the league. And, well, Mikel Arteta, fair play to him. He has made Arsenal a formidable team recently. The only team that haven't lost in 2024, that haven't drawn, they are the only team in the Premier League that have won all their games in 2024. And, well, 
in quite some margins. And all they did, the game, the five games they have played is against Palace, Forest, Liverpool, West Ham and Burnley. 5-0, 2-1, 3-1, 6-0, 5-0. That is good. That is good going there for Arsenal. And the Arsenal, you do expect, are a very, very good team. They are in the title race, two points behind Liverpool. This season, they've been scoring for fun in the Champions League. They did score six past uh, Lons last time out at the Emirates. They did score four past PSV Eindhoven, who, like I said, are having an undefeated season. And that win will be massive for, for Arsenal in the coming future, I predict. So, yeah, Arsenal, you do have players like Gabriel Jesus, Bakayo Saka, Bakayo Saka, massive part there for Arsenal, an influential part there in that Gunners team. And, well, he... He, for me, is one of the best players in the world. He has to be reckon. He has to be recognised in the Ballon d'Or uh, this season, this year, Bakayo Saka, because he has been very good there for Arsenal. He's been the one that has well been on their lips. He's the one that has done quite well. Jorginho and all, he has been a good signing there for Arsenal. Fair enough, he's sat a little bit, but still, he's been a part. Declan Rice, we all know Declan Rice and Martin Udegaard, all been good parts there for Arsenal. And, yeah, I think Udegaard will find a way to, well, hit the strings there for this time. So, I'm going to say, I think this is the first time I'm actually going for an away win, apparently from City. But I think Arsenal will win this game. I think Arsenal will beat Porto this game. I mean, fair enough, Sergio Conichal does have more Champions League experience than Mikel Arteta. This is his first season managing a Champions League team. But, uh, the first season, obviously, in the Champions League managing Arsenal... But I do think that Arsenal will be fine. And I do think that for Arsenal it will be quite easy. It will be quite easy for them away from home. So I'm going to say, I will say it will finish 3-1 there to Arsenal. I think Mikhail Saka will score. I think Martin Udegaard will find a way to score. And you know what, I'm going to say William Saliba will also get himself on the score sheet. 3-1, they'll all play in different positions. I do think Mediterranean will score a goal there for Porto to get themselves back in it. However, I still think... They will win the game, uh, Arsenal, by three goals to one. The hefty, hefty league there for them going into the second leg next month at the Emirates. Then finally, off to Naples and try a bit of the pizza. And off to, well, the Stadio Diego Armando Maradona for this game between Napoli and Barcelona. And what can I say? Two fallen giants there from last season. Napoli. Where have you gone? Where have they gone? One move, one man has affected them. Luciano Spalletti's decision to leave and obviously retirement. And I don't blame him. You've obviously won the Scudetto. You want to go out in style. You want to bow out in style. Fair enough for him. But that move has cost Napoli big time. And do you know where they are now? Ninth. Ninth. The ninth place, almost 30 points behind uh, leaders Inter Milan at the minute, and well, last year, Napoli. Last year, Napoli get this. We're eighteen points be ahead of Inter Milan this year. They're well over thirty points behind. So, if that doesn't say anything, I don't know what can. And well, for Napoli, they have obviously had change of managers. They did have a uh, Luis. They did have a uh, Louis Garcia, I believe. Someone Garcia. I can't think of his name. Uh, Rudy Garcia he did manage their Napoli. Obviously, he came. From Al Nasser, he left Al Nasser to join Napoli. And well, they're doing quite well. But they weren't the Napoli they were. Obviously, losing to Fiorentino, losing to Real Madrid, losing to Empoli. That was the last straw there from him. And they did decide to stack him. Orginio de, Fran de Lorenzis did decide to sack uh, Rudy Garcia. And instead, they did get Walter Mazzari in as coach. And well, yeah, yeah stuff hasn't been doing great for them. So, Napoli this season... They haven't had a good season. They haven't had a good season this year, Napoli. And, well, every team can have a bad season. It is what it is. But, well, Napoli, just after winning the, the Scudetto, is a little bit disappointing. It's a bit disappointing. However, I can also say the same thing there for FC Barcelona, but not quite as bad. And I do think there with Barcelona fans, they, do, they have over-exaggerated a lot, haven't they? I mean, they think, well... They're obviously not going to win the league, but they think they're not going to get out. They're not going to be in top four. Relax. Relax, Barcelona fans. Relax. You're going to be in the top four. You'll be safe and sound. And I do think the panic button's there for Xavi started when they did lose 4-2 there to Girona. 
ever since they did lose 4-2 to Girona, then the panic station started to happen. And, well, ever since then, they did lose five games. And, well, significant ones. They did get knocked out of the Copa del Rey. They did lose 4-1 to Real Madrid in the Supercopa. Lost 5-3 at home to Villarreal. First time Barcelona have conceded five at home for over 30 years. So, that says something what they didn't obviously want. Xavi hasn't done what obviously he wanted to do last season and that is similar to Napoli they haven't done what they wanted to do last season and that has affected them big time they still can score don't get me wrong but they can concede a lot of goals they have conceded 34 goals which well it seems okay if you think of it but also thinking of the big time they are bottom half of the table in terms of conceding goals in La Liga so the defense purely isn't isn't right the attack Fair enough. You've got generational talents like Lamine Lamal there who's playing for you. Then you've got Victor Roque, Ferran Torres, Robert Lewandowski, obviously your star man. Jao Felix hasn't been the same Jao Felix since, well, the Champions League, since he signed when he did score them three goals and he could tell he was a threat. He hasn't been the same man there. I do think that has costed them. But I think defence, defence there for Napoli hasn't been great. Defence there for Barcelona also hasn't been great so what i'm gonna say you know what high scoring high scoring affair here at the stadio diego maradona and at this time i'm probably gonna see Gennaro Gattuso manage napoli again like we did see in 2020 but i'm gonna say this 2-2 i do think this game will finish in a draw a 2-2 draw in specific because i think the two teams a high scoring, really a high scoring game. And for me, what I can see is if it's a high scoring game, it's going to be a very, very good game. And well, Victor Osimhen not playing because of AFCON, that has been a big part there from their losses. But I think Napoli will get the draw what they need. And Napoli will take a draw. Because, well, again, when you go in there to the Stadio Olympique, or, or well, the, uh, the Louis Olympique Stadium in Barcelona, uh, well, Barcelona's home ground, then they might think, hang on a minute, we could beat them here. However, I'm going to say I'm going to be tight. I'm going to favour Napoli there for this tie. And I'm going to say it will be 2-2. Two, two. I think it will be a very high scoring game. Like I said, not really any defensiveness happening. But I'm going to say Napoli 2, Barcelona 2. To conclude part 2 and the first leg of Champions League predictions. And just like that then. I will get going. So if you did like that video, if you do say something, it would really mean a lot to me. But you don't have to. As I shall go, see you soon. Stay safe. I'll be talking to you a lot in the next one. See ya and bye-bye.